My reason for never leaving the business was always because it was about to make it, it was about to make it. So it fucking clicked and I went, whoa. Are you ungrateful little shit? Fuck off. I was worried about losing all my money all the fucking time. Their story has kind of like parallels to ours, I guess. Do the action, because you're either gonna, you're gonna learn from it, and most likely the consequences aren't permanent, so you, you kind of, you net up, you net positive after that if you act. This is different. This yeah. is good. <laughs> this is it now. This is this is where the channel goes viral because these is guys are viral. Is that a thing? <laughs> Not yet. What, uh, <laughs> Zach and Jay, welcome to the process. Hello. We've gone viral though. That's what. That's my first question. What's it like to go viral in a, in a in a positive I'll take, way? I'll take this. I'm sure. Because we've had <laughs> someone. Because I've had I had another guy called Chris and he went. He did. He went viral for something bad. Is that Liverpoolian? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that yeah, is right. good. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, what's it like when it's like the nice way around? Uh, I, I went viral at like the best possible time because no one was watching my shit before. Yeah. And then that was like the start of like the whole kind of proper YouTube journey, doing it properly. So, uh, yeah, it was just surreal. Like, I find it really interesting hearing other people's sides to the story, like where they first saw the video and when like right. where everyone was because none of my family knew it was going viral um my brother was on like a building site somewhere he heard it on the radio um and he rang me up and he's like what the fuck did you do last night so i'm really i'm excited to talk to you guys because you're you're mm -hmm. going to be like no one else will i'll ever have on this oh, strand cool. the idea of the show is it's the process and so what i want to dive into with you guys is how you guys make the videos that you make what's going through your mind when you kind of go through that. And so that comes back to this viral thing. When you've got a blank piece of paper, or I don't know how you guys do it, when you're mm. creating ideas, is that the ultimate aim initially? Or is it, is it stories for the grandkids, like you say? It's a bit, but I think like the viral thing is a good stamp of approval that you've done something worthwhile for other people outside of your own little following, whatever that may be, yeah. to give a shit, basically. Um, it was kind of necessary to start off like with my personal channel and this channel we're trying to get like a viral hit to just kind of get that initial traction it's and push isn't it yeah that's a word isn't it? it's, traction. it's like so hard like with the amount of content good content as well that's being put out there amongst the amount of shit as well to get like recognized from zero to like a thousand or whatever mm. that's like the hardest and then so initially that is what it was kind of all about just getting that initial jump and obviously then you're kind of, people give a shit about what you're gonna make next, which is the aim really. Yeah, well, so that, that, the first, and God, there's too many things to list here. Like, <laughs> look, <laughs> the, the titles on your videos are like, just insane. Yeah, what do you think <laughs> about the titles? We're never sure about them, to be fair. Well, I wanted yeah. to talk about titles as well. Yeah. God, let's do that now then. So when, when it comes to titles, do you think title first, then adventure, or do you think of the adventure and you'll find the title later on? Oh, it's definitely adventure first, yeah, surely. Yeah. yeah. But, but for me, in, in make it, before sitting down and making the video, we kind of think, like, what is what would the headline be? Mm. So, like, one way to kind of wrap up everything that has happened or the reason why you're doing something. So, like, because because clickbait kind of lost its meaning, like, a lot of titles you see now, which should be mad, like, it's just kind of lost its You've meaning, seen, yeah. I think. Because you would see, be sensitized, aren't they? Yeah, and people's got so much money now from YouTube that they are going out and spending 100 grand on like a, a new car or whatever, and it is that is I feel like it's lost its edge a little bit. Yeah, so yeah. Um, yeah, we always try and think of something which is gonna like evoke curiosity and something which is like quite mad. When I've looked into like what makes something viral or you know what makes something do well on social media, the the, the thing that often um, it's used the word that's used is like remarkable. It's mm. like how can you do something that's kind of remarkable in some way shape or form and that's mm -hmm. certainly like that's the guiding point and with a lot of your titles there's like <laughs> it's we it's we or i <laughs> yeah. did something in this amount of time or, or whatever it is yeah. you're seeing that everywhere now on on, on youtube it's a it's a it's, it's a new trend that i think is gonna i'm intrigued to see where that goes so mm -hmm. what's that instead of them what would you say is the alternative to we i before it was all about getting it in kind of like a short space so it was like Box Open Championships 2018. Yeah, yeah. Or, or something like that, or world, World's Maddest Sport, all in caps, uh, in brackets, gone wrong. We take the piss with the brackets stuff yeah. as well, which we enjoy doing. Yeah. We, we always do like we, 
Oh, yeah. right. And it's kind of... I think it was keywords. Different. I think yeah. keywords was the big thing. Because I... I, I mean, we, yeah, we always mess around with these little things and what works best. Um, and it's so hard to, to kind of put your finger on what when a video does do well, what it was. And I guess it's like an accumulation of all this stuff, but the bog snorkeling, for an example, that, that kind of took off. It was our first video on the channel, like yeah. proper episode. And yeah, it just one week randomly started getting a shed load of views and it got like, I think it was like 450,000 now, which is like mad for a channel. So it wasn't in that first, like that first 24 hours? Was no, it, it was, it, it, no, it, no, it was, it was like weird. probably two weeks in. Yeah, it was like one week after, then it hit 50K and then it started getting like 20,000 views a day. Then it was starting just getting like 60, 70,000 views wow. a day. It just, yeah. just kept fucking going. Well, how did you feel like in those days before that? It was the... <laughs> Was there, I guess, because you, you start this new venture, yeah. like, is there a minute, a tiny minute of panic? Now I'm buzzing with it, to be fair. Like, we was expecting no one from my channel to go across because yeah. at the time, I had done the thing which I've done all the way through, like, my personal channel journey and just kind of went silent for, like, a good month and a bit while we were, like, filming content and preparing stuff. And I didn't really tell anyone anything because we didn't even really know at that time what it was going to be. Um, so my channel was probably a lot of pissed off people and kind of, so what we was expecting say two to 5,000 people to jump across yeah. Yeah. Um, in the first day, but it was, it was 10,000, which was mint. And yeah, it's amazing. Man. From then, like the, the, it seems the, the core little audience have been so on it. Whenever we put a video out, the, the videos get more views quicker than my personal channel, which has yeah. like, yeah, double the, more than double the sub, so. So let's go back to the start of you guys. How did you guys meet? How do you, how were you guys sucks. mates? <laughs> yeah, um, so we met at university. We were at the first year of uh, business team entrepreneurship at the University of West of England. And it was a proper weird degree where you've got to set up and run your own different business projects. Yeah. Like the so already, Basically. it was the first time it's been done in the UK, started in Finland like 26 years ago. So already it was like a melting pot for a load of little weirdos who wanted to do Go to uni, but not do any uni work. There was like no no formal like lectures. There was no exams. Um, yeah, we were literally thrown into two teams. The the course was like really small. Um, we did like profiling tests, and they split us into these two teams. I was on Jamie's team, and then they was like, right, go do business, whatever that was, and we had to set up and run. Go do business. Companies <laughs> Pretty much, and, yeah. There was there was, was very mess. little guidance. It was, yeah. yeah, it was a it was a mess. And you stuck with it, didn't you? And you didn't. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. Is it simple, yeah. Was it simple as that? Like, how did that? So, so how did you get I, to that point where Zach's got this channel? Right. Okay. Yeah. So so I um, so I was in a business that was um, I started like six weeks into the university. We were originally called Unique Access, where we were helping business Unique Access. Unrivaled access to the student market, it was. Where we, we goes into his little pictures. I've got like three different pitches, um, <laughs> which it evolved to. But yeah, that one was unrivaled access to the student market. And it was the idea that we could help business in Bristol sell to students. Then we changed that to, um, after meeting with the vice chancellor, to help the university understand why students are dropping out. And then after seeing kind of a bit of a gap in the market, we developed some software on how to predict which students are going to drop out and what support they needed. And then ran that for about a year and a half after uni as well, so about four and a half years in total. Um, while kind of every other student was doing every other different thing on the course, that was running his Helpful Water Co at the time, um, which I'm sure he'll say about. And then eventually kind of, yeah, we were just, we, we always got on really well. And on that course, it connected you with people who kind of saw the world in a bit of a different way. Um, so if, you, if I thought of an idea or he thought of an idea, we both kind of knew like we could ring up each other and get each other excited about it. Right, so yeah, I think yeah. we knew that spot was there already. And Towards the end of uni, the business I've been running for two years, the guy that I was running it with stole like half of the money and just bounced. And then I was like six months to the end of uni, pretty much like... Was he a good mate? Better than him, I thought. <laughs> I thought exactly. He's done yeah. all right there. Um, all right. So yeah, that was like a kind of like cruel reminder of like, shit, the real world's not all that. So I was like yeah. kind of really excited to get out of university, still plug away and, um, but yeah, that never happened. So like six months towards like graduation, I just focused on the dissertation and then kind of, I was left at the end of uni. Um, I was, I was actually like joined a mate's business. It was like a uh, kind of advertising agency for a little bit right. um, and I just, didn't like it after a while. It was like seven months after uni and I was just fucking going a bit mad. So I like wrote down everything on my way back into like the office. Uh, basically why I didn't want to be there and all, all this kind of like dead emotional shit. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. Uh, basically like signed the bit of paper saying like, I'll figure out what I want to do and I'll do it. Um, and then pretty much like a few weeks after that, I quit and started doing videos on YouTube. Luckily I had a bit of money from the business before and which gave me like kind of eight months. And so the, the the Olympic jib. Yeah. When was that? That was like 
So was that in the middle of uni? This was still during uni, yeah. No, no, so it wasn't. It, wasn't. It, was, was it not? It was not, no. It was when not. did you graduate? Uh, June 2016, and that was October 2016. Was it? Right. So it was, it was about two months. Well, we I graduated about four months. No, it wasn't. He knows. Cass, I don't. Cass was my <laughs> don't listen to me. No, no, because it was, I know why, because, yeah, and this, this is, this. so this is part of the, the problem slash solution. Um, we, we started sneaking into festivals for that summer after, uh, just as we were graduating, and then the Olympics came along. We decided we were going to do the Olympics, and I just got my first software client with a uni, big five-figure deal um, with Aberdeen University, dead excited to work with them. Um, and then that was about two months prior, and we were doing a shit job. We did, we'd spent loads of money developing this expensive software, yeah, yeah. Um, and then charged a load of money to, for them to use it, and it just wasn't working as we hoped, and doing all this shit, and we were behind on deadlines. And I was a bit down in the dumps from that, but it wasn't really related, but yeah. Then we did the Olympics. Next day, it's booking viral. But what I don't viral. understand is when you've got this, like, like I've watched, I've watched the video yeah. of the story as well. That yeah. you've got this kind of, you've, there's, there's two. Tr it feels like there's two tracks with you. Yeah. And, and <laughs> there was two tracks with you initially, but then you went, fuck that track. Yeah. I like this track. Yeah. So, be, am I right in saying that out of the two of you, are you the sensible one? No. 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 <laughs> so, I mean, maybe I'm getting and ahead of myself uh, a little bit. That's I'm why I was on the wrong track. Do you know what? And that, this is why, like, I knew that. Whenever, because we set up the channel, the initial, the name of my personal channel was that jib, and that was like this word that we were using all for you need for fucking about basically sneaking yeah, yeah. into places. And um, the, the first is that what you smoked when I said jib? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I don't know. I don't, like, so, that's no, what the I reason why I laugh at jib is because no one knows this, but my mate in Manchester was a bit, was a bit of a football hooligan, and his right. dad was a bit of a football hooligan oh, for him. Oh, jib's getting into the ground, isn't it? Yeah, in, and he was in a firm called Intercity Jibbers, the ICJ, <laughs> and I don't condone them, but go, they'd go around each different city without paying on a train ticket. Yeah, ICJ, yeah. you pay, you gay. And for <laughs> oh some, for some, I know, I know, shocking. These it's are all fun. probably middle-aged men with Stone Islands on trying to rock in in the eighties or something, and. And so we, as a bit of a joke, I'd be calling it when we sneak into festival, a jib. Yeah, and yeah. now it is the national word for any yeah, sneaking. Yeah, do, uh, and people remember, use it naturally, so yeah, I love it. When we were at uni, we were like, oh, my, like when we know that we've yeah. done this sneaking in thing properly is when people start using jib. I yeah, mean, yeah. yeah. Well, that's it, uh, in, in my, uh, you know, I haven't seen it in a dictionary, but that's the definition I've got. <laughs> oh, that is the definition, <laughs> my friend. That is it. being there soon enough, I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> but like, but you, you're so, so having your own business, in my mind, is like super mature. Yeah, but this is but what then you, you've got this weird, not weird thing, but Jamie. great thing that oh. you're desperate to. You're desperate to. Yeah. Why, why are you trying to get into festivals before the Olympic thing? <laughs> In behind it's, the scenes, though, that's that's the thing. Like, Jamie always had this kind of like Cole Pilkington esque like sense of humour and the things that he'd say and just the shit that he would do. Well, and you know you're doing the Cole Pilkington. It, it was like I, I don't think so. I, I, think, I think it's just a northern thing. Uh, yeah, I think it's just like dry. But he's just. I, I suppose so. He's just a bit of a nutter, and then he'd whack his suit on go out and do these pitches yeah. and like we'd, we'd be at kind of networking events throughout the week just waffling shit to all these people in suits and then we'd go out on the weekend and just fuck about like and it was these two different worlds like which are yeah. it was kind of like the uni experience but we were obviously doing business throughout the week um and that's what i think it come from but yeah. i knew all the time that they were kind of the two worlds would collide at some point yeah. and it was just the olympics scene collided that did that. big time yeah i find it so interesting because you look like i went to uni and just fucked about Mm, I yeah. totally fucked up. I'm not saying you didn't, but I'm just saying I, I yeah. totally fucked about, had no clue what I was doing. Yeah. Then went travelling after that to give myself yeah. another year because I still didn't <laughs> have a clue what I was yeah. wanting to yeah. do. Yeah. So, so me in particular, more than I think anyone else on the course, I only went, so I only went to uni because my mum and dad said, you've got to go to uni, you've got to go to uni. Yeah, yeah. And I said to them before, I'm setting up a business, I don't want to go to uni, it's not good for that. So as soon as I got to uni, because this entrepreneurial course, I was like, right, I'm setting up a business, I'm going for it. So yeah, I very rarely went out midweek in uni, it was just grafting, grafting, grafting. Yeah. Um, and yeah, whenever the weekend came, I'd, I'd it, 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 nothing ever happened. Like, it was like, I wasn't running a business. But I was running a business at the time with a guy called George Sanderson, Scouse George in the videos. And he's even fucking madder than me. So we, we, we got onto like, this prestigious accelerator program in London called Mass Challenge, 900 applicants, about 280 founders made it on, only 80 startups. Me and him, I was the youngest person on it and he was the second person. And we'd laugh at how we'd be meeting investors, meeting universities, talking with all these mentors. And he'd be in Lakota, some horrible little club in Bristol <laughs> on the weekend with his shoes off, just like crawling on the sofa. <laughs> and we'd just laugh, it's like, me and him together are a deadly combination. Really? Yeah, you yeah. Thought, like, yeah jo Scouse George is fucking out of shell, Scouse George. <laughs> we miss you. <laughs> we miss you. What's the buzz like mid-jib? 
Yeah. Oh, it's fucking you're riding the wave. <laughs> oh yeah. It's before Best film before in the world. a gym, it's disgusting. Yeah. Like the amount of times, and Jamie's like one of the most confident people I know. And like, it, as I said, would be like pitching in front of like hundreds of people for his business, all that shit. As soon as it comes to like the gym stuff, you just see him like crumble into this little bitch. <laughs> it, I, I, I'm fine with it now. Like I'm fine with it now. Yeah. But it was only when I was running my business, I'd always have the devil and the angel be like, yeah, you shouldn't yeah. be doing this, shouldn't be doing this. But I'm like, but for some reason, I can't. If, if in my head says you shouldn't be doing it, then I kind of just want to do it more. But then I just go down into this little, and I'm like, oh, 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 fuck it, let's do it. And then, yeah, that's it. But yeah, no, like when you're, when you're doing it, like the Olympic one was just a series of events which happened perfectly and we timed, we didn't even mean to time them, yeah. but it just happened down to the T, like how we wanted it to. And mm. while it was happening, we were just fucking, I just remember being on the bus, literally getting paraded down the, the streets of Manchester, holding our fake, Olymp like our fake gold medals up. Every time we did it, the crowd would have rocked. <laughs> I had like, a mate in the crowd that was like waving and he saw me and I was like, what, what? what? I was like, yes, lad. It was, yeah, it was just surreal. Today is the day we decided to try and get into the Olympic parade. We haven't really planned anything. Well, did you win? So that was the Olympics. Eh? I can't believe what has just happened. Oh, man, what the fuck? You bought the kit from JDB or something? Absolutely. You just bought the kit. The moment before the gym, yeah. like two years on, that, that time's a bit yeah. easier now, is it? So I'd say, uh, uh, back then, it was all about pushing possibilities and seeing what was possible. It was started with festivals, started with doing little backstage things, like, oh my God, does this work? Like, at first it was, does this work at a concert? Yeah, it does. Does this work at a festival? Surely not. Yeah, let's do that. I mean, does it work at every festival? Oh my God, it works at every festival. Mm. Oh my, is that the Olympics? Surely we can't do the Olympics. Look how much security is there. That won't work. Oh, same principles shit. every time, and, and, it, and it just work, keeps working. What are the principles? It's just, a, just it's so it's it's, it's the, like you can break it down with human psychology, and I won't go too much into it. Or you can just level, say but. it is because you did a video on that chicken, recently, didn't you? The like with the the chicken wing, chicken wing, yeah, similar kind of concept, really. Yeah. Is it? Yeah, it's all about like kind of social proof and authority. Just humans are, are flawed like, in their heads, like they run on kind of scripts how they think their day is going to pan out. And if there's millions of pounds of security around you, you think, yeah, everyone's got it. Yeah. Like, you're lying in the streets, but you don't expect two fucking idiots who are half pissed off vodka at 11 a.m. to waltz on through with the other Olympians dressed Midday. exactly Midday. the same. What's your, what's your technique that's like the, the go-to one if you like? Because there's that moment as yeah. well, you have it in, we have it in all sorts of things. I, I would always have it. So that experience for me, like when it comes to presenting, mm. when I've done like events or stuff, there's been, when I first did it, I was like, what if I just like forget? Or what if like I've asked someone a question, they answer me one word back and I've got to think of another question. Uh, mm -hmm. But then you have that moment and for whatever reason, your brain just goes boom <laughs> yeah. and it offers you up the answer yeah. that you kind of need. Yeah. So I bet that there has to be a million of those moments Ooh. when you're like, well, yeah. I'd say what with, do you go to? With the Olympics one, we, we had a million go-tos, but everyone said that we blagged the Olympics, but uh, we actually didn't say a word no, to get on the, the bus. So just our, our game plan was uh, we'd go for a lesser-known sport, so that was we picked fencing because they wore the face yeah, masks. Yeah. So there was, this, this was only, <laughs> we only figured this out an hour before we were meant to be on the bus. Um, so we went with fencers and did a bit of research around them. Um, but we didn't realise that fencing alone isn't a sport, it's part of like a pentathlon. Yeah, yeah, modern, pentathlon. Pentathlon. modern pentathlon. pentathlon. Yeah. So we, when we kind of were getting rushed along, we were in the parade and then they were like, what bus are you on? And we said, we're fencers. And then she looked on her list and was like, bus three or whatever it was. Um, we didn't realise that until we got on the bus that we were with the actual fucking fencing team and we we're like, oh shit. So that was kind of like, at that point we did actually get run. Yeah, and, and, and yeah, the, the go-to, yeah. to be fair, Samantha Murray, shout out to her, she was a nice girl, um, said to Zach, what sword do you use? Already getting a bit suspicious. And this is, this is probably the funniest moment. And Zach starts panicking. For some reason he's asking him, not me. And he starts going, and I'm like, what are you doing, mate? What are you doing? And he goes, a sharp one. I'm like, you use a sharp one? Go on, tell him what sword you use. And he's just like, rip, rip, rip. Oh, put him in it? Oh, put him in him, oh, hey, yeah. Because I knew we were rumbled. Well. I knew we were rumbled. <laughs> so I was like, right, I'm have a bit of fun with this rumble. But there was another stage where I, we, we got kicked off, or and we kind of politely left as well when they asked, because we weren't just going to say, no, we're not leaving. And um, so we, and they said, right, we don't want to get you in any trouble, so if you leave now, you'll be fine. And then we were around another area of the parade, and, and this is how effective the kits were and everything. Like, this is how much we didn't need to bag it. One security guard said, look, it's your day. This is the parade. Look, you can't miss this. And was yanking the fence to get us in. And I was like, no, mate, no, no, it's fine. It's fine, honestly, we're, we're all this good. Was, yeah, this was after us going out live on Sky News, yeah. like being rumbled live on Sky News. And we'd 
told them we weren't going to go back in. Yeah. We, and this we, we is, almost this got is, forced to go back in against not, our will. This is not was, this wasn't in the video at all either. Like, but yeah, we were literally outside the fence, just watching the kind of final bit when they come round the big town hall, and it's all like everyone was there. And yeah, this the security guards literally dragging us back into the parade. So we were walking down the parade, and because it was like the Rio Olympics, it's all like carnival people. <laughs> we're walking in in all these like carnival people, it have, pissing it down. Shouldn't have happened. And then we get funneled through this huge security tent full of like hundreds of security, and all the Olympians are passing through just before they go live on air. And they were getting called out one by one. And this is what, again, wasn't on the video, but it got to that point, Jamie bounced. Jamie was having none of it. <laughs> you just yeah. crumbled. Yeah, okay. And I was I so know. hell-bent. I was like, right, I'm getting on TV. We had linked back up with the people that were on our bus who actually thought what we were doing was quite funny. And they were like, right, we could, we're trying to get you on TV. And this judo guy who was like the only guy from Team GB to represent uh, in the Olympics, he was like, you can come out with me when we get introduced. And I was I was two people from getting introduced with this guy to go out live on air, walk onto the stage. This was next um, to Theresa May as well. Theresa May was on that stage. Yeah, and, um, <laughs> and the woman that got us like earlier on grabbed me and was like, what are you doing? And we we bumped into her about four more times that evening when like, so at the no, after party. So and, <laughs> here's the next question then. When it comes to like your conscience on this, <laughs> are there moments where you're like, do you, how do you feel about the establishments that you're... I'm a scumbag. Couldn't give a fuck. <laughs> no, yeah. no, I, it's I don't, I can't, because I was thinking about myself, how would I feel? And I think, well, no, go on, you tell me it before I say it. Do you know what it is? I like, fucking hate myself. <laughs> Fucking no, we, I'm just doing it for success, man. I fucking hate myself. Michael Evans. So, nice. we, <laughs> <laughs> so we, um, with the Olympic thing, there was like a bit of backlash from the Daily Mail readers and all that shit, saying, oh, you ruined these people's days, people worked their whole life, but... There was the, uh, the majority was like, oh, this encapsulates the British spirit. It's just fucking about, it. it's a victimless crime, basically. And we, yeah, yeah. we went into it saying, if anyone is pissed off or like we get any sort of like pushback, we'll bounce straight away, no problem. Yeah, yeah. Um, but when we were on the, on the kind of float and everyone was laughing and joking around with us, they didn't want us to go. And we got invited to the after party after with them and we, we partied all night with them. So it was yeah, like, yeah, so. Uh, but yeah, I did, with the other security stuff, it's, I, yeah, it's kind of all the same. That's a good way of putting it, though. It's it, like, it is victimless. I've got a mate. Mm -hmm. I've got a mate like that, and he's like, <laughs> I, I, the rule, the theory I have with him is that if you ask him to do something three times, he'll do it. <laughs> you go, go on, like, jump in the river, and it, it, uh, you go, no, no, don't do that. He'll be victim <laughs> with that one. Fun. Go on, it'd be funny. <laughs> yeah, go, go on, it'd be funny. He'd be like, no, no, no. I go on, he went, all right. So you got like, if you ask him three times, he'll do it. But I remember talking to him about it once, and he did say like. No one else will ever get hurt. Like, I'll do mad stuff that people will be like, "What are you doing?" Yeah. But no one else yeah. will kind of get, get hurt with it. Yeah, I think I think that's the main thing. I, you could argue again, I guess, security is like at the at the front of they're getting the shit. Yeah. Potentially, people get fired, which I don't. We don't think it's ever happened, or haven't heard of it ever happening. But it's. I think that's a good opportunity for them to learn and potentially chat to us, which we've never had. So I, I think it's it's kind of a bit of a. Is it harder point. now? Do people have people? Do people notice you? Because it would yeah. surely like that'd be part of the security training now, wouldn't it? Yeah, They'd go around these two. Oh, unfortunately, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. After yeah. the McGregor vid, uh, so I went back to the same venue, um, which I won't name because they already hate me. O2 uh, Arena. No, it wasn't, it wasn't the O2. I'm not talking about Nitro. All right. Anyway, I went, so I went <laughs> back. <laughs> I went back to right. do the uh, to sneak into the um, MTV EMA Awards, and like Eminem was performing. I wanted to go backstage the same way as I got into the McGregor backstage bit, and just do a little video with Eminem. And uh, basically, I get in through the same doors I got in through the McGregor thing. The credentials look even shit this time. Get backstage with the same door. Now I'm walking down the, the corridor and I, there was one door to go backstage and one door to the VIP bar. So this is where I fuck up. I fancied a drink to celebrate. So I had left and in this bar was a woman who was in the McGregor video uh, who directed me to the door which I didn't go through just then. And she literally just shouts like, Zach, I hope you've got proper accreditation this time. And I was like, oh fuck. And that was the first time I properly got rumbled. And f off the back of that, I got thrown in a room, like five police officers, all the security. The security found it funny and they said, look, we've been briefed on you. We've got a whole profile of your face on here. That's um, mm. I was like, still, I've got in the same door twice. Like, do you not want to have a conversation about this? And never got any kind of anything coming back. I think they've just banned me since. But um, yeah, the security, security no now.
How did it? How did it feel watching Zach scale YouTube and get that? Yeah. You know, get that hundred k, and you're, you're working on your business at the same time. To be honest, I think everyone. So after that jitter, we kind of went well quiet, and I don't know. Is is this kind of? It's, it's semi-complicated, but I, I kind of, whenever I saw that success, especially at like the 100K, and everyone was like, oh, well done, well done, I always thought it could have been much higher, and I always saw, instead of the things that he did, was doing, which was really fucking good, it was the stuff that kind of wasn't being done as well, which is kind of, again, I was running my business, but then equally from what, what basically happened is, we were not signed up, but we were going to make videos together on the channel that we're going to be sharing. And then suddenly, after the Olympic video, the one that's got viral success, I just said, sorry, mate, I can't do this anymore. I've, I've not really thought about it. fucked up. I've got a business to run here. Yeah. Off you fuck, you're on your wands. And suddenly that looks a lot different to running a channel with your best mate to on your wands. Yeah. It's, it goes back to those, like, those two tracks that we were talking about earlier. Yeah. There's like, and, and I think you're still on them now because you, there's an element of you that just wants to have fun and mm -hmm. make memories and have stories, which I totally get. And there's also your, your entrepreneurs, aren't you? Both of you, you know, you did a course on it. So mm -hmm. you, you, you're, you're ambitious and you want success. So do you think those two things were the things that kind of pushed you over the edge with that? I, I, I don't think it was. He was smashing it, but like the yeah. business was smashing it and it was doing, doing yeah. what, it I was kind of what you wanted. Yeah, well. yeah, I mean, I think as a kid, I always saw, because I've always wanted to be an entrepreneur, and as a kid, I always saw entrepreneur as one job and everyone loves being an entrepreneur. And when I set up the business, it was it was it was doing questionnaires for business in Bristol on how to sell students and shit, and I was loving it. Um, and then I was loving the software shit because it was all new challenges. But suddenly it was like a year out of university, paying myself kind of a low wage to keep the business yeah. thriving and uh, trying to get more clients. And suddenly it was managing uh, developers and uh, working with universities, which is a shocking sector to be in. I was like, this isn't this isn't that fun. This is pretty wank. Um, and then, and then Zach was just having like sneaking into uh, London Fashion Week, um, and, and I was at the stage where I was just about to sell a new product that we were saying. And my my reason for never leaving the business was always because it was about to make it, it was about to make it. But suddenly, kind of, I think Zach said it was like, yeah, but what happens if it does make it? Do you still not want to do the thing that's most oh, fun? Yeah. And, and then <laughs> summit fucking clicked, and I went, whoa, I've not thought about that one before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and then yeah, that was probably the the beginning of the end. Because I think that's part of the that's part of the buzz of uh, of starting a business as part of the buzz of YouTube as well is is like is the building of something. Mm. Yeah. And actually, the oh God, the the like the journey along the way mm. yeah. is actually as as fun as hitting hitting a hundred k. Yeah. Because I think yeah. there's like I'm really fascinated. At, in the like the view element of it because I kind of I had it the other week like I, I put a video out and it got it got a load of subscribers mm. and I found myself looking at my phone more and more to kind of just because it's so nice with yeah. it <laughs> <laughs> it's so nice it's irritating it? yeah you've got I mean it's irritating the nice because I've had to fucking stop it but it gets way. to a point where you're like um, I'm not enjoying I'm not enjoying the bits in between. The, there's yeah. no glow. Yeah. I'm just oh, like, I'm when do about. I like? When do I get? To, when should I look again? And then is it all better go up again. It's a satisfaction thing, isn't it? Like yeah. it's just it's, it's, a, it's that dopamine, brain. isn't it? So you yeah. get the first one. It's like mm. heroin. You get the yeah. first one, and then after <laughs> that, like everyone is just trying to get the same one. It's like yeah, it's just like heroin. Yeah. <laughs> um, so f yeah, for you guys, is that something you have got to try and kind of focus on with what you're doing in instead of like? You, I think you both. I'm guessing you both get the buzz from starting something new. That's why there's like. You're kind of fearless with the with the new channel, and also you're both known to your audience as well. Yeah. Um, what what made you want to move, not move away from your channel, but kind of make that clear focus to have a channel with the two of you guys? Ah, uh, so it was a, it was a long discussion, wasn't it? It yeah. was. So we we had been talking about this. We f I found conversations that I recorded because I thought somewhere down the line it would make a video, and it's actually in the intro video to the channel. Like we were having conversations in 2017 after the. McGregor thing went mad. We were getting like kind of TV companies asking if we want to do stuff, all that kind of shit. And I was bringing Jamie along to all these meetings. I was like, right, if I can convince him, to, yeah. convince him to like leave the company, there's a reason now. Like, oh, we're working on a TV show or whatever it was. We were having these conversations like, oh, d let's rename the channel. Let's kind of do this, do that. And to me, it was never that defined what Jamie would be doing because at this moment, like. I'm doing all the editing and stuff like that. And there was no money on the table at that point when we were talking about it. Yeah. So I was like, right, so I, I didn't have a clue about the brand side. Now it's a bit more kind of Jamie's on the kind of progression, like the brand face and stuff and the planning of videos, but it, it just wasn't, didn't make sense in my head. So it kind of gets to, I've hit 100K and then I've got like all this kind of personal shit intertwined with like the content with me and Jamie as yeah, well. Yeah. So I, I kind of like, 
I just, we couldn't really, I couldn't come to like a, a real reason in my head that I wanted it to exist on that channel and rename my channel. So I just thought, fuck it, I'll keep that on there, I'll chuck my personal stuff on there and then start the Zach and Jay show from scratch. And I thought that'd be quite an interesting way to not piss off the current viewership on my own channel. Mm. Because I don't think it's fair to assume that everyone on there would want to watch. I mean, you're me very and Jay Marmite, maybe. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Hopefully, they've not got too many haters. But I was just really interested to see how it would do. Yeah. As well, I kind of like wanted to just do it just to see if I could, kind of yeah. thing. Yeah. Um, and so, who does what? So I'm. Do you, li you live together now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, not in the same bed, thankfully. Um, but yeah, he, he does just, all the. You've just got the second bed. That's just arrived. Isn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Second bed just out. arrived okay, in a week after good. two months. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, a bit cold up, but same room. Yeah, uh, <laughs> same <duvet>. Yeah. <laughs> oh, hello. Uh, but yeah, uh, yeah. He does all the editing. Um, probably goes without saying because he's mint at it. And what do I do? I'm pretty much always just on the next step. So we're looking at merch at the moment. We've got cool product that we're releasing uh, as part of the merch, which uh, hasn't been done before, which which I've been working on. Um, yeah, next few next few videos, ideas, making them making them happen. Yeah. Also in conversations with the scripting stuff. Yeah, prescription stuff. Branding stuff. Yeah, branding stuff like invoicing. Um, well, start started invoicing. <laughs> <laughs> one in, Ooh, one okay. invoice. <laughs> <laughs> Always invoicing people. Bear busy. Um, <laughs> but that. yeah, so just yeah, proposing to brands, thinking about how we can integrate brands with some of the content, things like that. Is that is that all the stuff that you don't want to do? No, I, do, I enjoyed doing that before, like, because it was kind of natural from doing the business stuff at uni. Like, I, I quite enjoyed all the writing proposals and all that shit. Mm. Um, but ultimately, it took me away from kind of ever uploading consistently because I was I would literally take like two, three days a week doing yeah. kind of emails and all that kind of stuff. And yeah, my content on my personal channel wasn't ever regular at all. So I think people don't. Um, People don't realise that, how yeah. long editing takes. Yeah. Oh, fuck really hell. don't get it. And the thing is though, you sound like an utter wanker if you go, <laughs> you go, yeah, just editing, it's just so tough right now. Like Everyone in so the- difficult. But it fucking takes <laughs> ages, man. Everyone keeps commenting like, what was the comment today? Top comment on the video, as soon as it went out about like how red my eyes are and what drugs I've been smoking. I was like, for fuck's sake, I've been <laughs> editing the video for like three days straight to get it out for you ungrateful little shit. <laughs> fuck off. Is but there yeah, a tipping point with that? That's something Bri um, Brian said, True Joy said, that so like when he had his like first 50k, they were like, they loved him. <laughs> they were like so nice to him, they couldn't, like, they were like, you asked, why have you not got one subscriber? Everything he did was amazing. Mm. Then there was like, I think he said it's like, it's like 200, I think he said 200k, there's this sort of tipping point where like, <laughs> you're- He starts hating it. <laughs> well, it's not hate, but it's like- It's banter, like friendly. But it's like, ex of... it's uh, expectancy, I guess. Oh, like right, the okay. levels aren't like yeah. what they're expecting or whatever. There's this we, demand. Yeah. Yeah. We're, doing, we're doing them a no. favour. Free content on a weekly basis. Yeah. Yeah. People just don't think like that, do they? Like the viewers don't don't think like that. They, nah. they expect. Mm. It's understandable though. Like ultimately, if we're not, we. It's, it's about standards, isn't it? As well, yeah, like yeah. you want to hit those standards as well. So that, mm -hmm. that's kind of part of it. Yeah, and that was always something I found difficult when I was by myself. I could always let some of it slip. Um, if a video needed to be out, like for example, the the AJ video, I. I literally finished at kind of 10 p.m., drove straight back to Bristol and just drank coffee until like, and didn't stop editing until like 4 p.m. the next day. And I got it out and then I kind of chilled. But like it, when with this weekly thing now, I can take three days on a video, but as long as it's kind of week on week and I'm sticking to the schedule, I can bash it out. But yeah, it's, it is kind of, it, it's, it, that's what he's good at, like keeping me to it. How does that feel like the, the, when it becomes it's your job instead of you just like this is fun. Not, yeah, I've never well, we known. are working full time, yeah. but we're spunking a load of our savings yeah. doing it. <laughs> I, I worked out the other day. I've not earned a penny since last, not this summer, the summer before. <laughs> Until we got like this little charity <laughs> charity brand deal of less than a grand. Right. I was like, come on, we've been paid first time in like 18 months. <laughs> so so I, I, yeah, I don't really know anything other than does it play on, working for myself. How much does it play on your mind or are you cool with it? You're just getting on with it. He's, he's sweet. He's I, got, he's got a business funny. Yeah, ironically, when I was working at Unique Insights, um, I was worried about losing all my money all the fucking time yeah. because I just didn't have any passion for it and I didn't I yeah th that was it really no passion for it but this one I'm, I'm quite okay we're going broke with it I'm, I'm, I'm just like fuck it if we go broke or yeah, if I, I, th I think like what is the other side of that I don't, I yeah that, that's what fine. I'm thinking like, but I, I know that if I got broke off unique insights I think I would have been gutted yeah. because I don't know why but subconsciously I was, I was I, my heart wasn't in it I, I get, maybe it's because that's like 
Yeah, one, your heart's not in it. Two, that's like, that's the trodden path. Yeah. That's the like, that's probably what you had in your mind in terms of mm. like, well, I'll, I'll make a business. That business will be successful. Now I've yeah. loads of money. Yeah. So if you don't do that, then you feel a bit. Mm. Yeah. I'm, 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 I'm a, a little niggly bit inside of me kind of wants me to go like fully broke and just be like, right then, we've got to do it now. <laughs> but yeah, I, hope, I also hope that does not happen. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Very conscious of that. That's better, better for the story, maybe. If, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah the comeback. Just better, stick around. Just yeah, working yeah. in a bar, pouring pints. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I mean, from my perspective, I'm, I'm kind of cushy. Well, I'm confident in my abilities that I'll. I'll be all right because this year was the year that YouTube become a full time thing, yeah. and then five months into that, <laughs> pinned it off and started a new channel. <laughs> um, so yeah, I, I, like I was doing freelance stuff beforehand, and I've still got like all the old kind of people that I did work for. And yeah. shit like that. So if shit is the fan, I'd, I'd be all right. I think. I think, I think that's like as someone's a bit older. I think that that's. I wish I'd been like that. Yeah. I wish I'd been like, like it's such a that's such a great uh, question to ask yourself. I never really thought about it. Like, what happens if it is the other side? Yeah. What happens mm. if it doesn't work? Like you say, yeah, 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 yeah. And, and 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 for me, moving down to London to set up a business on a YouTube channel that got zero subscribers. I think for other people, <laughs> two months before we even, one month before we even launched the channel, as well, I was just chilling in London, working with Zach and shit. We didn't even launch, and I wasn't even in any rush. But it, there was no. As soon as we said, in fact, I, I said we were gonna, I was gonna move down before we even agreed that we we're gonna set up the channel. I was just like, right knowing that it was going to happen but there was no there wasn't even a question mark on whether it was the right move or not it feels like the, that formula like that there's a clear formula with you guys with like the, the content that you make and like yeah and those choices that you're making and in terms of like that seeing oh what's the worst that could happen so we'll kind of yeah. give it a go yeah and it, we were like we we're talking at the start with with youtube this year with yes fear who you guys know really well yeah um are you are you surprised at how how well it's gone for them? And are you surprised that this no. this genre is just like blown up? Did you not did you feel like that was happening before? You both not at all. When we when we first met him in Vegas, like I they commented on the McGregor video, so I knew one of them knew who I was. Uh, and then literally a week later, I jumped on the opportunity. I was trying to get uh, sponsored to go out to Vegas because I couldn't afford the flights myself. So I was yeah. like looking for a brand to cover it. I was getting like DMs from just weird blokes who said they'd pay for the trip if I gave them a shout out and just dodge shit. And I was like on the foot like for two weeks straight trying to get money to go to Vegas. Um, I was chatting with like betting companies because I was like 21 at the time, like knowing what to touch me. Uh, luckily like Caterpillar Boots jumped on it and threw me some money. So I ended up going, but that was like my in with them. So I was like, they saw the first video. I was like, come do the main fight with me. So I was on the phone like with Thomas. And when we first met them, they were at like 300, 350 maybe 400,000 subscribers and they were still very much like in the fucking pit of it. I couldn't help but think back to the moment I met these boys in Vegas a year ago. They were on 400,000 subscribers and had a shitload of plans and to see them achieve so much in such a short space of time is amazing. Now they successfully bridged the gap between YouTuber and a worldwide A-list celebrity in the first truly authentic collaboration in history such slow growth I think to start with them and again like feeding four people is just a lot more difficult uh, but it was like really eye-opening and uh, they never faltered once from everything they were saying back then and they haven't changed really the content like they've just got bigger with the kind of Why ideas was it and stuff because like I guess it's similar to like their story has kind of like parallels to ours I guess where but they they kind of just were willing to go dead broke and they were dead broke but they believed so much in like everything that they were doing, even though there was probably the Logan Pauls or the fucking dickheads who were getting millions of subs in like a few months. They were like plugging away, plugging away this quality content. And yeah. now I feel like they've got a brand which will outlast a good majority of yeah, most totally. people on the platform. People are rooting for Yesteria as well. I yeah. think that's a really yeah. nice thing. I think people root for you guys as well because you've like you've taken that jump and you've you've gone for it and you've done it in a like you are the antithesis of of that Logan Paul attitude of like, <laughs> I'm like, I have like, no idea what that one means. <laughs> you're the opposite of <laughs> that's all right. I'm getting there. Yeah, you're, that the, you're the other one. No. You're the antithesis of um, of that idea of like that kind of that other side of the American dream of like just get that money. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. like, because you want like. Do you say we want that Logan Paul yes, money yeah. there? <laughs> that's yeah. big money that. It's getting, you're getting closer <laughs> to that. Oh, yeah, you're on that way oh, there. Yeah, though. one invoice at a time, eh? But do you think that's, does that make you feel good that like, when you see the S3 like smashing it, it's on nice terms, if you know what I mean? Is yeah, that, I yeah, think so. Yeah, it shows that you don't have to sell your soul to, to do 
necessarily all out fucking mad selling your soul kind of shit to, to get fame, to get fortune, all that stuff. They, they pretty much knew what they wanted to do from the very get-go and they wasn't jumping on trends necessarily. And Does that allow you to be a bit stronger in that vision of like, oh, I can see this is working kind of by I the side of you? Yeah, but I mean, like, aside from yesterday, you see it happening all the time, just the, the people that you'd never think, like, there's, YouTube is just an example of people who can do anything and like my initial thinking with even like wanting to start a YouTube channel when I was back at school days but never did like was the idea that you can film or do whatever you want and make a living off it obviously there's there's a bit more rules to that nowadays and like the, in terms of actually the money making side of things you have to fit in a little bit more yeah, but yeah. like the, the baseline of it is if you build up a big enough audience like and that's possible in pretty much any any little niche or whatever you see some mad mad channels just blow up and it's like this can happen anywhere else on the internet. It's yeah. fucking crazy. But, well, I, I'm intrigued by that. The only code I'm really seeing, I'm seeing two codes when it comes to YouTube. One is like, you sell your soul. And one is, is you truly don't. Like, there's this, if there's this like middle <laughs> ground, do you know what I mean? Like, if you, if you kind of really stick to something that, like, like what you're doing, that, um, the quality of that, if, if, there's, if there's that quality there and you stick with that, I guess not always. It doesn't always just take off, but mm. I guess yeah. th there's a lot of examples. Yeah. Of that, you know? But what would you say the sell your soul bit is? I think I see that a lot in terms of people going. I think people have the the panic of the views. Right. Like so, for me, this exact this exact strand that I wanted to do, I thought at the start of the year I thought I'm going to start a channel, and it could it could massively fail. It could easily fail, and. And it still might fail. And <laughs> but if it does fail, at the end of it, will I be will I be proud of any of the videos I do if I just just talk about yeah. football? Like yeah. I like football, yeah. but if I'm just talking yeah. about stuff that I'm not truly passionate about, yeah. and I don't get any good okay, feeling yeah, from, yeah. then I don't think I'm I can live with like you know, yeah. like saying on the other side of it, I can live with it not yeah. working out. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, I think I some think. people will just go, well, that's big right now. Yeah. Or. Yeah. That's going to work. Because we, we kind of talk, I mean, we mentioned Logan Paul being bad and stuff, but I actually kind of think he believed in what he was doing was quite good. And, and he always said that he was putting a dent in the universe and, yeah, and yeah. making young people happy. And although he may have turned out to be a bit of a knob at times, he so yeah, I, I feel like he wasn't selling his soul in what he was doing. Maybe he just got lost in the source of it. Maybe, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Lost in the source. Yeah. You got the straight face. No, no, he lost, yeah, lost his way a bit. I mean, he clearly lost his way at some stage. Uh, yeah, yeah, he got his way out. January, January, I think he was. paddled out. He's out this one. Uh, last question. Ask everyone this one. Uh, what keeps you up at night? Hmm. Uh, when Zach knees me in the back. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> when he knee me he in the back. The day, oh, we've got a new bed now, yeah. No, we're sweet. Um, <laughs> Can't afford the heating. It's cold outside those covers. Um, for me, like, if I have a coffee, <laughs> oh, fucking hell, that's not four what I hours. Meant. The, <laughs> nah, um, nah. Is, if I get on like a trailer fort, because a, a lot of the times we'll have kind of exciting conversations before we go to bed, and then I'm pretty sure like <laughs> we're both just up in bed, like well, our minds going like mad about, yeah, yeah. and I always just write loads of sh incoherent shit on my phone, yeah. and then that kind of just get it out spurs yeah. more incoherent shit going on in my head. So that is just kind of yeah, channel based stuff. The next thing, ideas. Yeah, yeah. The next yeah, thing. Yeah. Really. Yeah, I'd say, I'd say, th there's two sides. One, which is the the semi-positive but well annoying, which is coming up with an idea. I always seem to come up with my ideas when I can't sleep, and it's so yeah, annoying. It's that, it's which is exactly. kind of good because I kind of I'm annoyed that I can't sleep, but then I come up with an idea, so I feel okay that I can't sleep because I've got an idea down. Yeah. Most of the time, it don't make sense. Um, Annoyingly, though, I I I have the battle between: do I actually get up now and write it down, All right, or yeah. do I just go? Can I? Can I? Me remember it well enough. Can I say like the keywords yeah. in my head enough times? No, I, I can go, never okay, remember it. Now. Yeah. I, I can never remember myself it. to do that. Yeah, yeah I never, I've tried right. that, but I've just woken up annoyed every time. I'm like, oh, I thought that was a good one that time, but. <laughs> and that, I think, that's the other thing I've heard. Do you find this? Do you, do you have, you go, I've got it, that's like, that is the best oh, idea yeah, I've ever yeah, had. Yeah. And then I'd, the next day, it's shit. It's like being Ooh, drunk, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. It's literally like you get so enthusiastic. Like, I don't know if I'm drunk off like, Semi kind of sleep yeah. chemicals. Or yeah, or the, like, I think the darkness as well. I think it kind of allows. It's like it allows your mind so to go, good. doesn't it? Yeah. I have that in the daytime as well. To be fair, um, <laughs> I've yeah. got loads of good ideas. We, no, 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 no. Some of them are really good. Most of them are really bad. But uh, yeah, I had one which I thought was going to be a game changer of the day. Where it was, we were. Should I say it? That, I, don't I don't know, know if it's good or not. It could be wank. It could be amazing. When we we wanted to 
Actually, no, I'm just going to say oh, that. Say, right, okay. So I thought this was the game changer because we were waiting on that one viral idea, the Conor yeah, McGregor yeah, yeah. sneaking, the Olympics, something like that that's not sneaking. Um, and yeah, we wanted to do a video on, um, well, we were going to do a protest and I can't, I don't know, we don't know, I didn't know what the protest was going to be, but we wanted to do a ridiculous protest that was so ridiculous that the world media outlets would be like, these two lads have strapped themselves to London Bridge to prevent... A, a bike yeah, rack yeah, going yeah. up or something, but it, it couldn't be too ridiculous where it was obviously a joke. I was like, right, what can we do? What can we do? What can we do? And I still don't know if it's crap or not. So, but I'm trying yeah, to find what the, something specific for it. And if I find that, then it's great. Because his, his ideas are founded on the best case scenario, but it's the bits in the middle, like yeah, what the actual protest bit. was, which is probably one of the most important parts of like that idea being the success. Oh, so, yeah, it's, so that's a format though. You've created yeah, a format. Yeah, now. and then yeah, but you go off bit. that and you're like, right, what are we going here? What are yeah, we doing here? Yeah. What I've done with this series a few times, it's been kind of talking to people about, uh, they're kind of looking back and they've kind of reached a point and now they're like, they're kind of going, okay, right, I know all this stuff now. I'm excited by like the energy that you boys have got. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> we don't know where the fuck's going. That, that, that was the last question, I'll finish on this one. You guys seem to have this attitude of like, just do it. Just get on with it. Nice like thing. even even we were tweeting, um, I was messaging you guys yesterday, and you were like, oh, I don't know if we can do it. And then you just went, fuck it. <laughs> you yeah. went, fuck it, we'll do it. <laughs> I was like, what? Okay, we're well, wicked, amazing. Yeah. yeah. Um, did you? Where does that? Does that energy ever run out? Or are you I just still not. are you still on that wave of like, loving it? So but the big thing for me um, was before I went uni, I was always coming up with business ideas, but I never do a thing. It'd be app ideas, but I just didn't know where to start. And that that going to uni, I realised like that just act, act, act. And yeah. there's a cool little saying which uh, Jeff Bezos, who founded Amazon, says, which is always have a bias to action. So if you come up with an idea or you're unsure on how to act, whether to do something or to not do it, always always do if you're not sure do the do the action because you're either gonna you're gonna learn from it right. and most likely the consequences aren't permanent so you, you kind of you net up you net positive after that if you act so um yeah i always try to do as much action as possible yeah okay. I, yeah i think that's pretty much always kind of been our attitude yeah. with, with the shit we went into so many situations blind and at the other end of it we've always just come out of it being like that was a fucking sick experience yeah. or that was like an amazing video or yeah. whatever. So and there has been a few times where we've, where we've got nothing out of it that I'd share thing the other day. Yeah, we flopped. Yeah, we flopped. We, in the past like out. three weeks, two videos we went to film have just flopped. Yeah, really? What yeah. was the second one? Nitro. Kind of yeah, wasn't what yeah, we wanted yeah. it to be. So. Not flopped. But yeah, no, again, like we kind of take stuff from everything and just all part of the fun. I on. think it's amazing, man. Yeah, that's, what, uh, that's why I wanted to chat to you guys because there's so many people who kind of will find an excuse or procrastinate. And I, I like that there's the, like, that switch with you guys that you just yeah. go for it. And I think it's class. Think yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, so, guys, go and subscribe to... Well, let's have all the channels. We have all yeah. the channels, please. Go. So my Twitter is Jamie Rawson. My Instagram is Jamie underscore Rawson. Is it underscore? <laughs> I think so. Um, I don't know. My Bebo is. I don't know. Um, YouTube, Zach and Jay Show. Get at it. Zach Allsop, monthly videos on my <laughs> channel. Ooh, monthly videos. Biannual. Bi yeah, biannual. No, work Every on century. That. Uh, you're mad if you don't go subscribe to both of those channels. They are, the video quality is just is amazing, and uh, the ideas as well are class. So go check out those. Those are, I'll put a link in the description and I'll put it everywhere for you to click on right now. Let me know who you want me to talk to next on The Process. If you've enjoyed this video, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Subscribe to the channel and I'll see you soon. And if you are here from the Zach and Jay show, subscribe to this guy's yeah, channel, cheers. fucking yeah, cheers. knobs. Cheers, cheers. <laughs> fucking knobs. Whoa, <laughs> go on, mate. Sweet. Thank you, boys.